So I'm currently in Shore Acres, which is one of the neighborhoods here in St. Petersburg that was absolutely decimated by Hurricane Milton and the rain. And this was on the heels of Hurricane Helene, which they are flooded out as well. And this neighborhood is one of those gems in the Tampa Bay area, but just continues to see challenges um, from the reoccurring storms and the hurricanes that we keep dealing with here. And this, this neighborhood is, it's not new when this neighborhood floods. This was one of those neighborhoods that floods when it, when it even talks about raining. And um, it's really sad. But the thing I wanted to highlight here is uh, last week I made a video and we'll link that up top here where I talked about how property values actually go up after a hurricane and i'm going to link uh, one of the studies that i cited um, in the description down below so you guys can go check that out because it's a fascinating read and what it says is they studied i think from the beginning of 2000 through roughly 2016 and uh, what they found was that property values tend to go up in the three years post hurricanes and people said you are full of it um, that can't happen and I and I want to share with you that study because it's crazy the way that things work and let me explain a little bit of why typically what happens is not everyone has the ability to come in and renovate or rehabilitate their property and what ends up happening is because this land is so attractive in terms of its value the home may not be but once you build these homes up off the ground you know you get them off off the the, uh, sea level um, you can build these houses up 10 13 feet high all of a sudden it becomes a very attractive property for people who are flush with cash so you've got investors who come in and Tampa Bay has already been one of those areas over the last five years that the amount of institutional investors in the area has grown tremendously um, and people take advantage of situations like this am I a proponent of that no am I a proponent of capitalism yes you know I'm I love the fact that we're able to, um, in this country, make something out of nothing. But I really think that there are some definite unscrupulous activities that take place. And let me explain what I mean by that. If someone doesn't have the ability to renovate their property, a institutional buyer or an investor comes in and um, is willing to partner with them. What do I mean by that? Like, hey, I'm willing to give you pennies on the dollar for this property. And they are okay with it. And they know that they could get more money at market value, but they just don't want to deal with it. Um, if they were to list their property or to sell it to anyone else, but they just don't want to deal with it anymore. That's a fair and transparent transaction. And I'm, I'm all about that. But, but if the investors come in and they are trying to take advantage of people, that's when I personally have a problem. Now, that activity has been taking place for a very long time. That's how a lot of people make money. It's called wholesaling. That's one way. There's lots of different ways that people do this. Um, but wholesaling is one of the most popular where they come in, offer you pennies on the dollar, and then someone who gets that contract signed will literally just go sell it to another investor. They'll make money by selling that contract, sometimes thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000, just by passing that along to someone else who wants to... Uh, come along and take advantage of that situation. So I'm going to get deeper on this subject, not the, not to be negative on it. I just want to highlight some things, right? Because there are people here who have been given these properties, uh, maybe passed down from generation to generation, and they don't have the ability to renovate them. There are uh, government programs. This stuff is going to take a long time. Y'all look around. I mean, this is almost three weeks post, um, Hurricane Milton, and there's trash everywhere. So this is going to be a while for cleanup. It's going to take some time to get, um, you know, some cash back in people's hands who want to uh, renovate their properties and, and get themselves in a situation where they're not being taken advantage of. So I want to highlight that. My goal here, um, you, you know, is to make sure that I'm, I'm showing everything, the good, bad, and the ugly. And, you know, if you've never been to this channel before, we talk about all things Tampa Bay, and this, unfortunately, is one of the things you have to deal with right now. Now, over the last three years, I've been able to help 150 plus families move to the greater Tampa Bay area. And it just breaks my heart to see this. And I shared with you guys last week that I'm one of those families. You know, we're currently displaced out of our home. Now, I'm not in a flood zone. I didn't require flood insurance. I'm 40 feet above sea level. And with the over 12 inches of rain we got in a six hour period, my house flooded. And I'm gonna share that journey with you guys, but I just got my denial letter from my insurance company yesterday, which I expected. I don't have flood insurance, okay? So we gotta take this on on our own. And that was an exchange we were willing to make, but not everyone is. And not everyone can, y'all. And to be honest with you, like 
we weren't expecting to be in this situation. So we're dealing with it just like a lot of other people are. You know, I've drove this neighborhood today and you just see block after block of trashed out homes and piles of good. This is people's lives, man. And I want to take the time to recognize that um, not everything's perfect in paradise. There is a price to be paid, you know, and um, unfortunately, this is that side. Now, there's all kinds of conversations about more frequent and those types of things. And honestly, I haven't studied the numbers enough to be well-educated to speak on it, but I will. Okay. So I'm going to dig into some of that stuff, but this is the reality of what we're dealing with. I wanted to get out here and share this with my community, with our audience. I'm going to kind of talk about this. I wanted to give you those resources. And again, people with cash, they're already running around. I showed you guys last week, they're buying houses for cash. You know, they're going to come in, renovate these properties or bring them up. That's there's a lot of demand for that right now, where they raise a home, put it 10, 13 feet in the air. All of a sudden, you don't have those flood problems to deal with, um, and the property becomes worth more. The house, okay? Because remember, there's two different things happening here. There is the land value, and then there's the property value, right? Those are two different things. The home is independent of the land. Now, combined, they're the total real value, right? But they're not necessarily the same thing. And sometimes we get caught up on it. Like one of the comments that we often get when I make videos like this is why would any fool, quote unquote, um, buy a piece of property like this? And sometimes you got to understand that there are a lot of people, there are a lot of people in this country who have more money than they have time. Okay. And they make so much money that having to deal with something like this is nothing more than an inconvenience. And for other people who may not be in that situation, sometimes we have a hard time understanding that. But after living here for the last six years and seeing how much cash is in the Tampa Bay area, coastal period, there is always people waiting for opportunities like this. There are properties here that people have not come off of because they've been in their family for generations and they were never going to sell those properties. And maybe they've been flooded out three times and they're no longer going to deal with it. The people with money who have been sitting on the sidelines, they are waiting for opportunities like this. So while, like I said, I don't necessarily love it, if it's done transparently and openly, I think it's it's great. Because someone's going to come in and do the thing that someone else could not. But if it's done unscrupulously, that's where I take. Definitely a different angle on that. I'm not a fan of that. Um, I think that kind of stuff should be exposed. And if you do too, let me know down in the comments below. Um, if you've never been on this channel before, welcome. Uh, you know, If you like this type of information, feel free to subscribe. And uh, we'll be back next week with another video. And hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, go out and live that Tampa life, y'all.